Welcome to my Secret Place Devotion with Oyix Alfred. The Word of God is alive and equipped to change your life. Good morning. If you're educated, well-read, or very knowledgeable, or you have lots of experience, it will be very easy for you to depend on your knowledge, on your wisdom, or your experience, or the things available at your disposal to be able to solve the problems of life. But the Bible tells us in Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6, he said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Meaning, stop depending on your wisdom, your strength, and all of that. The Bible counsels us in verse 6. He said, in all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Meaning that even though you have your own understanding, you have your own knowledge, learn to submit your thoughts and your plans to God in prayer and trust God to guide and direct you. So, dear Lord, we thank you and we give you great praise for today. Lord, I pray for your people, even as we surrender our plans to you today, I ask that you make our path straight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Do you know that if Jesus had a church today, do you know that there'll be very few people in that church? Or let's look at Apostle Paul. If he had a church today, let's say he was the pastor of some church, do you know there'll be very few people in that church? Well, the reason is because the message that these men brought, along with Peter and the rest of them, the message that these men brought were messages that were tough on the flesh. They are messages that, you know, go against every natural inclination of men. You know, there are things that go against the things that men love. The default mode of men. Those are the kind of things that Jesus taught his disciples to do. He says, if somebody slaps you on one cheek, he said, turn the other cheek and allow yourself to be slapped again. I mean, who is going to tolerate that kind of message? But those are the kind of things that Jesus promoted. He said, when you want to give an offering, make sure that the left hand doesn't see what the right hand is doing when you're giving alms. I mean, who wants to do that? Everybody wants to blow their trumpet and get the whole world to know that they are the ones that give this X amount to the, an orphanage, who gave this poor person this house, who helped this person get a job. That's a natural inclination of man. But Jesus is saying, in my kingdom, it is the other way around. You cannot be seen and so on and so forth. So Jesus would have had a very small shot because nobody would like the kind of message that Jesus was bringing. He was bringing a revolutionary message, something that the Pharisees and all these people didn't talk about. Jesus was not emphasizing those things. Now, the reason is because in Luke chapter 16, verse 15, the Bible says that you justify yourselves before men, but God knows your heart. For those things which are highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. So meaning that the things that men naturally love, the Bible says that these things are abomination in the sight of God. So if you're the kind of person that generally likes what the average man likes, you will not like to be in the church of Jesus Christ. If you're the kind of person that tolerates and approves the kind of things that are natural for men to tolerate and approve, if you're the kind of person that enjoys what the natural man says, says what your mind tells you you know your mind will tell you don't allow yourself to be insulted don't allow yourself to be put down don't allow that person that you're older than you know be above you get promoted above you You have to do something about it. you have to put people down to rise you have to really struggle to move yourself ahead you have to manipulate and do all sorts of things because you can't let people ride on your head if you're the kind of person that thinks like that and that is the way the natural man thinks and that is the way the most people will think if you're like that you would not like to be in jesus church because every Every time he's going to be saying things that are opposite. That's why he said those things that men naturally like. The Bible says that they are an abomination in the sight of God. And so that's why Jesus talking to his disciples was saying, if you want to be my disciple, there is a certain sort of man or a certain crop of people you must be. So in Luke 9, 24, he says, if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. I mean, what kind of pastor is this? How is he telling us that if you hang on to your life, you're going to lose it? Because a natural man wants to hear you should hang on to your life. The natural and default mode of man is to preserve themselves, preserve their lives. But this is Pastor Jesus saying something absolutely different. Actually, this saying is repeated so many times in the Bible, so you can't even just ignore it and pretend it's not there. If you read the same Luke chapter 17, 33, Jesus repeats the same thing. Matthew 10, 39, Jesus says the same thing. Matthew 16, 25, he repeats the same thing. Mark 8, 35, the same thing is there. John 12, 25, the same message is there. Meaning that it's not something you can ignore. 
So Jesus is saying the crop of men that are going to be called disciples are the crop of men that are willing to lose their lives for the sake of Jesus. The truth is that if this present life is more important to you. You will do everything you can to protect it. You want to protect your reputation. You want to protect your investments. You want to protect your name. You want to protect everything that you have. Why are you doing that? Because this present life is more important to you than any other thing, you know. But if God or following Jesus is more important to you, what will happen is that you'll be ready to endanger your safety, your health, your comfort, your reputation, what people think, all of those things. You'll be ready to let go of all those things for the sake of Jesus Christ. If following Jesus is important to you, you'll be ready to stay in an unsafe environment, an unhealthy place, in an uncomfortable place just for the sake of Jesus. Just think about the early missionaries that came to places like Africa and even the people that preached all over the world. They were in very uncomfortable situations. They were not liked. Some of them were insulted. Some of them were stoned. Some of them were thrown to the lion's den. But they didn't care because this present life didn't matter to them as much as the life with God mattered to them. Nothing material can compensate for the loss of your eternity with God. No matter what you gain on this earth, it is nothing compared to what Jesus himself is going to give you. So Jesus said, the people that are my disciples are those who are going to go out of their way to do whatever it takes for my sake. So basically in God's economy, true profit actually comes from giving away your own life for God's purpose. But those who strive after this world's wealth, power, success, and all of that, and they neglect their spiritual life, the Bible tells us that they're going to forfeit their experience experience of God's reality now and in the life to come. So the choice is yours. What do you value more? What are you willing to give up for the other? That will tell you whether you have the mark of a disciple. Now in verse 25 of that Luke chapter 9, Jesus continues by saying, and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you yourself are lost? Why did Jesus make this statement immediately after saying, if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. That's in 24. And then in 25, he now tells them, what would you benefit if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? Because I believe that as Jesus was talking to the 12 and telling them all these things, he realized that the desire for material riches might be a powerful deterrent against full surrender to Christ. And so he said in effect that, you know, suppose you guys could stockpile gold, silver, and all of that, and you could own all the real estate in the world, own property, own stocks, own bonds, own everything you can think of, you know, and if you gain all of those things, what good will it do you? If you gain all this for a short while and forever lose yourself in eternity, it's absolutely insane to bargain with such. You can't bargain for your eternity by temporal pleasure. So Jesus was one name. He said the pursuit of wealth will be a major deterrent to you being a disciple of Jesus. Jesus promised us something in Matthew 6.33. He said, don't spend your life pursuing all this material wealth. He says, spend your life pursuing Jesus and those material wealth will follow you. God's plan is to bless his children, but he doesn't want you to go about it the way the Gentiles go about it. He wants you to give up yourself for him and see what he will do on your behalf in every area of your life. I hope you've learned and put it into practice these things. Thank you for listening. God bless you and enjoy the rest of the weekend. For other life-changing messages, you can now download the app Rev Oyik Speaks from Play Store for Android phone users or Apple Store for iOS users. You can also follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and Telegram, all on the handle Oyik's Alfred.